Welcome to BR Proud, and every Tuesday we, of course, bring in our national champ, LSU, former LSU outfielder and major leaguer. I Mikey. wish I was still LSU outfielder. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey Vaughn took, those were the glory days, that right? That was, that was. Uh, let's talk about some of those days. It's got to be so tough as a baseball player. I, I grew up playing basketball, so it wasn't quite this rotating lineup that you see, and you can get in there, and you, even as a backup, you can get your minutes. If your shot was going in, don't worry, you could finish the game. It's not like you can right. get in the lineup, get out, and get back in right. in the same game. So it's so much different with baseball. Jay wants to see the different combinations, how things stack, you know, lefty to righty, I'm sure, those sorts of things. What would be your advice for some of these guys who aren't seeing it every single day or maybe moving around position to position? Maybe you're a freshman. How do you mentally approach that so you're in your best space to right. go out there and perform? It's a tough thing to kind of navigate, right? Because baseball, as you mentioned, isn't one of those sports where you can come in and out throughout the course of the game, right? It's also a rhythm sport, mm -hmm. right? It's a timing sport. The more at-bats you get, the better you're going to feel, the more comfortable you're going to feel, and probably the more success you're going to have at the plate. And so it's a tough thing to navigate, but it's something that's going to happen in any level that you get to, right? When you get to college, but going from high school to college is the biggest jump you're going to have. Something that was told to me when I was coming up to the minor league system was, hey, no matter when you get in the game or no matter how bad you're feeling, always put something in the bucket. Whether you work a walk, whether you make a really good defensive play, whether you get, you know, you're 0 for 4 and you get a clutch hit in the eighth inning, whatever it is, just put something in the bucket. And that's a really good advice because no matter when you come, as long as you're doing something productive to impact the game, you're going to get more opportunities. And you saw that with Milam. You see him getting more and more playing time. He played some shortstop, played great defense at shortstop, played great defense at second base, puts together some really good bats, and he's going to get some more opportunities. Jay's mentioned he's going to get some of the guys that haven't really gotten in yet more opportunities, and it gives them an opportunity to say, you know what, this is what I can do. I know you may not have thought I was right. Listen, when I was coming my freshman year, if you watched me play before the season started, my first nine at-bats I came in after uh, winter break, I didn't touch it. 0 for 9, nine strikeouts. I may have fouled off two balls, right? Miserable. So I, the only reason I was able to travel and get in the game is because I, I could play defense and I could do some things on the bases, right? And over time, we were able to get some, some I was able to get some at-bats. We were beating some teams. We just got more experience. And then I finally got an opportunity uh, before the third weekend of the SEC to get a start. And I hit a couple home runs, and I was able to, to earn my spot and take advantage of that opportunity. So my advice was, it doesn't matter when it happens, be ready to take advantage of your opportunity when it comes. Let's talk about someone who's going to have a lot of opportunities, we think, out there in center field or in the outfield just all together, and Paxton Kling. The talent? undeniable the start not exactly how he would have drew it up right um, but you're seeing some positive things from Paxton Kling yeah you know look there's been eight games right and it's hard to and we talked about this all fair it's very hard to look at him and say oh it's eight games or you know he didn't get off to a good start or he's doing this or he's playing really well it's only eight games there's not a ton of at bats he may have 20 something at bats on the season but what I've saw what, what's been encouraging for me is whether he's hitting in the nine hole, whether he's hitting in the leadoff spot, he's getting on base. He's getting on base at over a 500 clip, which is the most important thing, right? People look at average, they want hits, they want things. If you're on base, you're doing something. He can run, he can, take, he can steal bases, he can take the extra base on a single, he can go first to third. And so anytime he's on base, he's, re, re, uh, he's causing havoc for the defense, right? And it it's, gives the opportunity to the offense to score more runs. And so he's getting on base at a 500 clip, and I think to me that's encouraging because if you're not getting a lot of hits, but you're still getting on base, once you start getting comfortable and you start getting hot, now instead of having 35 at-bats, you may have 25 because you've walked 10 times. And so now you have one really good series, and you get some confidence, and you just take off, right? He hit the home run this weekend off his face, off the scoreboard, which was awesome, right? And you talked about your basketball player. If you're, if you're struggling, shoot or shoot, right? When you start seeing a couple shots go in, you start getting a little more confidence and you start shooting a little bit more and, they, and, and you become a better scorer. Same thing offensively, right? He saw a ball go over the fence, he felt the barrel, and I think you're going to see him continue to stay hot at the plate, continue to get on base, and continue to score runs.